one week. For the best results, also try the cellular day and night creams from Nivea. Our final story tonight is about refusing to do nothing in the face of a seemingly insurmountable problem. Right now, around 5,000 South Africans are waiting for life-saving organ transplants. Many of them have been on the waiting list for years, victims of a painfully slow organ donation process. And that's what inspired a group of fifth-year Stellenbosch medical students to step up. Not yet qualified, they're pioneering a facility that promises to save up to 100 lives every year. McFarlane visited Tigerberg Hospital to find out more. Lucky, you get a kidney within 10, 15 years. Many of us aren't that lucky, so we don't live that long. Okay, okay, who's taking what? Gentlemen, line up, line up. And ladies? Okay, okay take from this side. John T. Wright and Nazim Nagdi yeah, are leading this group of Stellenbosch <laughs> University <laughs> medical <laughs> students <laughs> on a mission. And we'll just go chat to the security. At they the, may the look more like a professional well, cleaning you. squad okay. yeah, than our future doctors, <laughs> but already they the are making a difference. So if, you, yeah. if you drop that, then our patients aren't going to get an infusion. During their training at Tigerberg Hospital, they realized the shortage of ICU beds was slowing down the organ donation process. The problem, they were told... Oh, well, we just, we just don't have space, yeah. right? We would love to, but there's no space. Let's get the stuff in the room. So it was you, then that their idea was born, yeah, to create a space where a brain-dead donor can be kept yeah. to keep their organs yeah. alive. Stuff here in the, on the corner on the left. What would it take for us to do like a formal room in Tigerberg where we can send these patients and enable this life-saving process to happen. Picture a brain-dead donor and we've got consent. They now need to be stored in ICU level conditions for 36 hours and ICU bed space is probably one of the most scarce medical resources in our country. And we often don't refer them to the ICU bed because the child with a spinal injury needs it and, and, and rightly so. So we, we don't have the bed space to keep these donors. And that's why we started the life pod. John T and Nazim began raising awareness and money through their already established non-profit organization, Save Seven. Imagine saving seven lives with just one decision. That's the power of organ donation. And this group of future doctors is making it easier for that life-saving decision to be made. Each and every one of us can save up to seven lives after we pass on simply by asking our families to donate our life-saving organs, right? So I've got seven life-saving organs within me right now, and so do you, right? We've got two lungs, a heart, two kidneys. You can also donate your small intestine. And funny enough, you can actually donate your tissues as well. So I can give somebody my, their sight back by donating my corneas, skin, bone, any, any of those, like all recyclable parts, basically. Small things over here on the bed. Nazim is the vice president and co-founder of Save7. Um, <laughs> Save7 basically exists to raise awareness about the people waiting for organs. We ultimately here for, for people. There's solutions out there, there's just no one to pull it forward, no one to push it forward. Okay, let's just go in here. But it's what Nazim, Jonti and their fellow students are now doing, putting their time and elbow grease into preparing the Life Pod, South Africa's first official organ donor unit, which opens next month. Okay, okay. Jonti has wanted to be a doctor since he was a boy. His mother suffered from chronic migraines and he saw how debilitating they were. She was obviously in pain a lot and being able to see what a doctor can do with even just a little bit of medical insight and the impact that it had on her, like being able to go out instead of sit in a dark room in bed all day, that had an impact on me. Now, as a fifth year medical student, he's realized he can make a difference in the organ donor field before even qualifying as a doctor. So seven was started at the end of my first year and I think if the purpose behind studying medicine is to learn how to save lives, you, you don't have to wait to do it. Medical history is made at this hospital. In 1967, Dr. Christian Barnard made history with the world's first human heart transplant at Grotesky Hospital in Cape Town. But 
Today, South Africa faces a severe organ donor crisis. Just 0.2% of the population is registered as organ donors. That's one of the lowest rates in the world. And that's led to a critical shortage. Tagerberg Hospital is South Africa's second largest and a training ground for Stellenbosch medical students. Its dialysis unit is packed with patients awaiting kidney transplants. Dialysis is a treatment that does the kidneys job when they fail. It cleans the blood artificially, but takes so much time, many patients, like Lynette, have to stop working. After dialysis, I am so dizzy. And then I get home, I can't do anything, I need to go lie down. And that's how most of my day is spent, which is not easy, it's quite tough. So yeah, all in all, it's been a, a very rough, rough journey. In South Africa, over 5,000 people are waiting for life-saving organ transplants, with some kidney patients waiting over 20 years. We're losing up to 60 viable organs each and every week, instead of giving them to the people who need them the most so that they can go on living. And we're choosing to donate them to the grave. Uh, the issue that we're focusing on at the moment, though, is that even if we had consent from everybody, we don't have the bed space to put donors in to ensure that they can be kept for the 36 hours necessary before the transplant operation happens. Organ transplant surgeon, Professor Almi Muller, believes the life pod is an innovative way of addressing South Africa's organ donor shortage. Of course, we cannot harvest organs just straight away when somebody's brain dead. We need to do some tests on them. We need to be able to screen for infections and do some tissue typing bloods. Those things take a lot of time. And in that time, we have to keep the donor stable before we can take the organs out. Now, this creates a unique space where we can put patients to use a resource that's already available in a way that's innovative and that creates opportunities for a driving transplantation. We are registered and ready to go. Last year, Jonti took part in the Half Ironman to raise funds for equipment for the Life Pod. And through crowdfunding campaigns, the students managed to raise 400,000 Rand. We're hoping to process about one donor per month. Now, that doesn't seem like a lot, but for perspective, sometimes only one donor is processed every six months. And so we're hoping once this unit is up and running, it will create a pipeline up to 100 lives a year. And our dialysis unit is full of people that need help. Basically, you want to see whether they have criteria for reperfusion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Professor Saad Lari is especially proud of his students. He teaches them emergency medicine and advises them throughout the process of setting up the life pod. You've obviously mentored a lot of students. What made this group extra special? It's their drive, man, and their grit, you know. They face some obstacles, but they never gave up. And they persisted. This was something from the heart, you know, uh, not pun intended. <laughs> <You know. laughs> Most importantly, the life pod provides a quiet area away from the overcrowding and chaos of an emergency setting. That for me is a huge, huge thing. We can offer that donor and their family dignity. Trained by top doctors, these students are gaining clinical experience in an overburdened environment. But instead of overwhelming them, it inspires them. When you train in that sort of environment, there's a lot of challenges and you realize that as a young person, you know, you have the energy to try to solve them. Like the 123 people who helped us put this together, who have recognized, yes, there is a problem, mm -hmm but I am capable of being one part of the solution. For Lynette, the life pod means she's one step closer to getting a new, healthy kidney. What better gift to give than the gift of life, the gift of hope? There are so many babies that are dying and people are not aware that, you know, they can make a difference. So that is, is really something beautiful and worthwhile to do before you should leave this earth. And the good news, these young doctors in the making aren't going anywhere. 
do you see a future for yourself in this country? Definitely, yeah. I, mean, I believe that we're called to, to stay. I'm going to stay. This country has given me a lot. And all those privileges that it's given me, I have to give back. Definitely, I'm staying. Okay, it's so inspiring when everyday people, in this case, a group of young people decide to find solutions to our challenges. You know, they're not just waiting for someone else to come and provide the fix. Absolutely, and what I love about that story is the fact that it's in stark contrast with the story we did a couple of weeks ago of medical professionals choosing to leave the country mm -hmm. uh, because, yes, opportunities might be better there. These young people are not just committing themselves to saving lives in South Africa, but committing to staying mm -hmm. in the country. And you know what I'd love us to do? to do a follow-up in a few years to see the life pod in working. Absolutely. Now, if you have an inspiring story to share with our team, why not fill out the suggestion form on the Carte Blanche website? We look forward to hearing from you. We'll be right back.